Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our live and free teaching today on a couple of different versions of spool quilts. They're all done with strip piecing. They're great to be done with leftover scraps for one or with pre-cuts for the other. And we're going to talk about both of those. Now this is some of our pre-teaching to get excited and warmed up and motivated and enthused and signed up for Quilt Club Week. We are four weeks away from Quilt Club Week. It will be the last week of September. Now, if you sign up before the end of August, you can get Quilt Club Week for $57. After that, it will be $77, which is our regular price for Quilt Club Week. Now, the cool thing about Quilt Club Week is that you will get Quilt Club Week 2020, 2021, 2022, and then our new one of 2023, that will be the last week of September. So if you sign up now, you can go in and start watching the past uh, seasons that we've had and then be ready for our current one for 2023. Now Quilt Club Week is a real exciting, fun time. On the last week of September, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're gonna continue every day with free teachings. And then Wednesday is our early bird and it's just for the people that have signed up and said that they're going to participate. So we'll have early bird classes on Wednesday and then, and I'm not sure on the time yet for Wednesday early bird, but our classes will open of a morning, probably around nine o'clock central time on Thursday. All of our Thursday classes, lectures, webinars, lives, all of those will be um, open at the same time, except for the lives. The lives will be at a certain time during that day. And then on uh Friday, same thing, they'll all open of a morning. So it's just like when you have a, a quilt show and they open the doors and you can go into the quilt show. You can go over here and look at the quilts. You can go over here to the classes. You can go over here to the vendors and people choose which ones they wanna do first, second, third. That's the same way it is with our online Quilt Club Week is, is that anybody can go in and watch whatever category, watch it over again, over again. Then the next day we have new stuff. You can go back and watch the previous days or go in and watch the new stuff. And then on Saturday, the third day, same thing. Watch the new stuff that is opened up that morning and go back in and watch the past and previous things. I think you will really, really love and enjoy Quilt Club Week. In our past videos, the last couple of weeks, we've talked more in depth. We've shown quilts. We've talked about what day, what patterns, what books, all of that. I'm not going to do that today. Um, but you can go back in on the past two Saturdays, I think, and watch those videos and get more, um, actually see some of the quilts and so on. But just like a quilt show, you go in there, you don't know for sure all the different things you're going to see and the fun you're going to have and the different uh, lectures or webinars that you're going to sit in on. So uh, I like for some of it to be a um, surprise and oh, wow, look at that. But we have uh, in-depth classes, we have little mini classes, kind of like what I'm gonna show you today is what I consider a little mini class. We have little mini lectures, full lectures. We have uh, myself this year teaching. We have Sherry Esposito te teaching, which will be her first year for Quilt Club Week. And then we have Kay and Kathy teaching. They um, have taught during the past Quilt Club Weeks, and then we've had some other guest teachers in the past ones. Now. If you were going to take anywhere from a three to six hour class from me at Houston or Paducah or Road to California, any of, of the shows, um, any of them, you would probably pay um, about $80 for that one class. And you can get Quilt Club Week for the, during the month of August for $57. So that's a wonderful, wonderful value for you because not only do you have more than one class from me, you have all these other classes and lectures also. So it's an excellent value and I know that you're gonna love it and I'm really excited about all the different things that we have available for this year of 2023. Question? Well, I have one about uh, upcoming classes. How about option 41? Is that something they'll need? Um, need option need 41 for the, for, the, classes. for the upcoming classes. Option 41 is the snowball. I had to think what it was. Yeah, um, sorry, yeah. And in Quilt Club Week, I don't remember that we have an option 41. Um, we had in previous yeah, we did in a previous Quilt Club week with the snowball, because um, option 41 is the snowball. And then I'm going to do a live 
uh, from the Firefly book with the, the big medallion feathered star, and it has a lot of snowballs in it. So um, we will use it in that one for Quilt Club Week. And option 44, for sure. And option 44 is the Firefly. So remember, and then we also are going to be using a lot of the four patches. So if you need the four patch ruler for um, Quilt Club Week and for our Premium Club this fall, we're going to use a lot of nine patches too. So right now you can get free shipping at $150. So if you don't have the four patch or the nine patch, you might think about adding that to your order so that you can get in on that free shipping. Firefly book, um, option 41 snowball, uh, the hen houses, the hen houses um, book is kind of option 43. And it is, um, we taught that last year in Quilt Club Week. So we always try to teach the new stuff. And then if you're watching past Quilt Club Weeks, then those things are in there that we've had and done. So another question? Nope. Okay. All right. So there's two um, quilts that we have up here. These are the same ones. This is our new one that's called Pineapple Spool. And that's the main one that we're going to teach today. But we're also going to look at the spinning spool or the scrappy spool. It, it kind of has both of those names. And that is one that we've done previous. But it is a great scrap buster. And it is a spool. So I wanted to add that one in today because we always have new people watching. So when you look at the two quilts that we have up here, this one is the vintage quilt. You can see how we've used a light in the center and then with dark strips and then a light. And then you can see how we've had a dark in the center light and then dark. So the cool thing about these quilts is, is that you can start with any size of center square and you can start with almost any size of strip and we're going to talk about the ratio on that here in a few minutes and get a beautiful block. So we do have a special where you can buy just one pattern like the new one or you can go in and get the spinning spool pattern and the new pineapple spool pattern and get those together and save a dollar. So check those out and if you are on our email list then that was a link in your email. If not, go to our website squareandsquare.com and put in the spinning spools or the pineapple spools and you'll be able to see those patterns up there if you want. And I think they're just $4.95 or something like that. So they're, they're very, uh, very economical and then of course if you get them together then you can save a dollar. So great thing there. Okay, so here you can see where it's kind of scrappy, light in the center, and then alternate on the strips, dark in the center, and then alternate on the strips. And this one here, you can see how we've just used two different colors. This one is from the Vintage Fabric Collection, and this one is from our new Paradise. Remember, our new Paradise fabric is on sale. You can get it for $10 a yard, and that's until the end of September. Our sale goes to the end of September, which is the end of Quilt Club Week. But we want to we want you to be able to get as much of this shipped to you ahead of time as possible. Normally, we you watch Quilt Club Week, you do the orders, and we ship after. And this time, we're making everything available to you ahead of time, okay? All right, so this one, we've just used two different colors. You can see how we've started with the black in the center and then went purple black. And then in this one, we started with the purple flower dot in the center and then went black with the, the flower dot. Now, we're going to talk about sizing as we go along today, but let's just talk about construction first of all, okay? So, um, well, maybe we'll go ahead and talk about sizing. Let's go ahead and talk about sizing. So, for this one here of the pineapple uh, spools, this is a great one to use pre-cuts for. You can do a five inch charm in the middle. So you would have a small five inch charm. And then the honey buns, which are pre-cuts, which are I think one and a half inch strips. Those are great to use for your strips going out um, are the honey buns. Then on this one, we have a 10 inch square in the center. And that is a layer cake. And that is great. With this one though, you do, you could use the two and a half inch jelly rolls on them. Um, but in the directions, I've had a three inch strip in there. You could do that. Now the strips can actually be any width that you want. And I do have some samples down here where we've used skinny strips. So you can use any size of strips that you want on the outside edges of the square. And you just keep adding strips until you can trim that corner and get that nice, perfect square. So great for pre-cuts. 
You can jump in and do any size that you want. In the patterns, I give you multiple sizes and help with all of that. And so normally when we have <clears throat> a square in the middle and strips on the side, the strips are a ratio for that square and, and you get the, the sharp point. But because we're doing multiple strips to build out that corner, you can do pretty much any size of strips you want. I do say to keep the, the in this one, keep the strips consistent and also make sure that you um, um, build out to make that corner. So let's look down here at our very first one that we're going to trim. And you can see here how we have the square in the middle and the strips on the side. Now the strips have to cover the side of the square. So if you have a 10 inch, layer cake, then these have to be anywhere from 10 to 10 and a half inches so that you can, can cover that. And here you can see the back. We always press so that the center square is flat. That means the seam goes out or away. Now because the strips are not very uh, wide, you can use the mini ruler, you can use the original ruler, or you can use the grande. So I have the mini right here, and just like we do with an option one, we put the 90 right in the tip of that corner of the, your fabric square in the middle. The black lines go right over the seam. And because the ruler's small and the, the unit is so big, we don't have that grid line that shoots through um, on that one. And we have enough ruler to cut those strips. And that's what we're going to do and see how that leaves that fourth of an inch. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim on this side. So just go to all four corners and repeat. Now there is an old rule in the quilt world, if you've been around very long, if you're new you maybe have not heard it, but there's an old rule in the quilt world that says if all of your pieces going in the quilt are the same unit. So let's look up here at our quilt again. So see how you're making this square. So this is your block or your unit and you're sewing it to another one that's like it. Colors may differ, but the sewing or the construction is the same. Then it really doesn't matter about um, seam allowances or sizing because if you just stay consistent doing each block, then it will work out okay. So that's kind of a great thing on here and it's for this pattern and that's also a great thing for beginners, for people who are just learning to cut their strips and their squares and maybe new to a sewing machine and to seam allowances. If you just stay consistent with this particular block, this doesn't work for everything, but if you just stay consistent with your cutting and your sewing and your sizing, then everything's gonna fit together the same. It doesn't matter if it's an eight inch or an, an eight and an eighth or an eight and a half, as long as you're consistent and they all turn out the same size, then you're good to go. So that makes this a wonderful project for a beginner. Now last week we did the soldier's comfort one and that was also a great one for a beginner, but it also helped teach a little bit of, um, of doing everything in the strips of stripping everything and then cutting it because your brain does ha have to get used to that because you're not cutting out each individual square or rectangle. So this one is a great one to get used to using the ruler and trimming and not have to worry about everything uh, being perfect and that's what beginners like. So here we are back again. Let's look down here at our cutting. And so you're getting used to looking at the ruler pushing that 90 right into the corner of this fabric square, lining up your lines, and then making your trim. Now, the last one, now notice I don't start at the edge of my ruler. That's not good for your, your fabric, it's not good for your ruler, it's not good for your cutter, and it's not good for you because you can jump off of that and then come over here and cut yourself. So kind of start in the middle, then go back to hit that edge, and then go forward, okay? Now I'm going to use the grande on the last cut just so that uh, you can see how the different rulers um, look. 
The grande is great for um, when your block gets really big. So I'm just going to the blue lines here on the grande. The 90 is going to go right in the tip, just like we did with the mini. And the blue lines just go right over the seam. And see how that's leaving that fourth of an inch? And that's what the mini one does too. It just leaves that fourth of an inch right there off of the seam. So now when you look at your, your piece, because this strip wasn't wide, now you have this new edge and um, it, it's, it's a corner. See how you can kind of see how that green mat, if we kept adding strips, see how that would finish out the, the corner. And we're gonna keep adding strips just on this side to help build it out. And that's kind of the way a pineapple works. See how the pineapple is option 12 of the square and a square system. And see how now, not only do we have the four sides from the strips, but we also have the four sides from where the point is at. So it's important to pay attention to where you sew the next row of strips to because it has to go, for this particular pattern, it has to go here on the side of the strip. Now with a pineapple, the next time I sew around, I would put it here where the point is or where the seam is at. So that's kind of why we call it the, the pineapple spool is because immediately you start getting eight sides and not the, the four sides. With the strips? Yeah. Okay. It says what happens if the strips are sewn in the round. Yes, instead opposite of opposite. Versus opposite each other. Yeah, that's a great question and something that um, a lot of newbies would talk about. So this is the basic square right here. Square in the middle, strips on the side. And of course you can see how much wider these strips are in ratio to the square because when this is trimmed up, uh, let's just go ahead and trim it. When this is trimmed up, you're going to get the full uh, corner. You don't have to keep sewing. That's option 12 when you keep sewing to get that corner full. So the question is, let me go ahead and get it trimmed. Um, we have a special way of sewing these strips onto the square. And during, uh, starting next week on Monday, we're going to be doing the option overviews. And so we can go, you can, we'll have more visuals and you can see in depth. Um, the beginning part of this of just sewing this of what we call the basic square. So see how the corners come all the way out. Slightly blunted is good. That helps remove fabric in those seam allowances. But of course if they're too blunted then either you're working on another pattern or you picked up the wrong strip or the wrong square or something has gone haywire because it should go um, all the way out. Slightly blunted is good. When you look at the pictures in the book they're all slightly blunted. Now, when we sew these, you can kind of, let's look at the strips here. So these were the last two put on. You can see how those are on top, and we call those side three and four. So that means this one and this one is side one and two. So what we normally do is we put the strip in the sewing machine, and we put our square on top, and then we talk about sewing the opposite side. Now, um, it really doesn't change the look of the quilt if you just keep sewing around whether you're going counterclockwise or clockwise, but it is faster and easier and I think less sloppy and you definitely use less fabric if you do a long strip on side one and then the longer strip on side two. Because if you start out with a long strip and you put this in and you're just gonna go around then your next one is here, you cannot do the long strip. You have to go back in and cut those shorter strips like we do on side three and four. And so therefore, any time, oh, here's a sample right here I had in my drawer. So see here, you can see the square on the strip. And then we go in and sew opposite, and we do it with a long strip. If you go around, just to kind of make this short, if you go around, you're going to use more fabric. It's going to be more sloppy. Um, I think you can kind of lose the concept as to where you're at. So definitely a beginner might struggle with that. But to me, the sloppiness and the using more fabric 
just I don't want to do that you know do it in emergencies or if you have to rip something off or whatever but not as a general rule of doing it all the time we'll talk more about that next week when we get ready to do our option book okay all right so let's look at where we're going next so after you have your center square and you have your strip sewn on and you've trimmed it leaving the fourth of an inch then now you need to put a strip of fabric here to help finish the corner. Now, depending on the width of this one and the width of your last one will determine how many times you have to keep sewing out in the corner. If you had a big square with little strips, then you may need a third one when you get ready to go. But this is, this right here is what it looks like when you get these corners on. And so now you just go in and trim up the corner. So I could even use my mini or my big one. And I'm just lining the edge of the ruler up with my cut already. I don't want to cut anything here. I've already cut it. I don't want to cut anything here. I've already cut it. All I want to cut or trim is this section and this section. So see if this strip was not wide enough then I would maybe need to come in here and put another strip on. And that's okay as long as all of your blocks are consistent. So I do say stay consistent with your strips. If this one is a two inch, then do it a two inch on all of your blocks. If it's a three inch, then stay consistent with your three. So just pick up any uh, ruler that you've got there on your table square it up with where you've already cut and that you have a nice true block and then just come in here and trim now i'm kind of away so it's hard for me to see this outside edge see how i trimmed that a little bit shouldn't do that but if i get right on top of it then my head is in the way of the camera so that one was better now these are pretty nice size. They are a um, two inch. So when I'm measuring from where I cut to the tip, that's two inch. So any of the charts in the book that ask for two inch strips to sew around your square, these would work to save your scraps. Any comments on uh, pressing uh, the strips or even on sewing the, on the round? Well, I don't, want, I don't want you to sew on the round. That's not the way I teach. I don't want you to do it. And so that probably becomes more difficult also if you're sewing in the round is the pressing um, because they're going to lay different. Because if you sew one side and then the other side, those lay out consistent and on the other. And then even in the, the patterns, when, I, when we take the options and press them and then we add them to another option and press, that's going to change the whole thing. I don't teach it to sew in the round. I don't recommend it. It kind of changes things. So to me, I'm telling you don't do it on it. Okay? Did you cut those 10 inch squares? This one right here is a 10 inch. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's look at the back on our pressing here. So see how all of these go out and away. All of these go out and away. and there is my block. So when I get ready to put this together, then I'm just gonna put it next to a light one. So let's look at the light one. So see how this was a dark in the center, and this is a light in the center, and see how we alternated dark, light, dark. So now on this one, we're going to do light, dark, light. So see how it switches, switches up. And then you would come in here and trim these corners exactly the same way. Now, you can go in on these and you can cut just, these were probably just scraps. So you can see how this was ripped off as of something else. So these were just scraps that I had. But you only have, it only has to be long enough to cover that. So if I'm actually going in and cutting this section off of my strip, this is too much. It's too much waste. You only need to cover that side. So let's look at this one here and let's measure. 
So from here to here is almost six inches. It's like five and five eighths. So I would, if I was cutting individual strips to go on the side, then I would cut them six inches, uh, just a little bit bigger. That way it's easy just to slap them on and sew them down. Now, if you're using a whole strip, there are pictures in the pattern of, um, of how to um, use a long strip and sew these on. So let me see here. Let's see if we can look at that picture. Okay, I'm not sure how well they can see it, but um, let's just, okay, let's say that I have a strip of fabric right here. Do I have a strip of fabric? Okay, so this is like when we're sewing the basic square, you have your strip of fabric and then you put your squares on top and this is like side one. So let's play like that this is my strip and I wanna sew this square to the strip. See how on these that we have about a finger space in between. So see on this one, I would lay it on the edge here and sew it on. And then my next one, let me see if I have one already trimmed up. Well, hmm. I don't, but I want you to, uh, let's play like this is it. Okay. so. This is the side that I need to sew on my strip. So see how I'm gonna put it down right there. And can you see how there's about, on this one because they're pretty big, there's about an inch in between here, in between from the angle of this one to the angle of this one. And so see how they're gonna overlap like this and you can just keep sewing and then you would have a space in between and put the next one on and just keep sewing. So let's bring the um, photo, let's bring the camera down as low as we can to get as close up as we can. And maybe I can show this on the pattern. Okay, so on this one there is a strip underneath and these are laid on top and you can see how they overlap and you can see just a little bit of that black strip underneath kind of showing through. And then you open it up and press and then you can come in here and cut to separate and that helps you work with strip piecing and in a speedy method. And then you can come in here and just trim your, trim your pieces up like we were showing. So whether you're working with um, scraps, short pieces, or working with the long strip. So see, once again, you just come in here and trim that corner up just like that, okay? All right, we're going to look at some um, variations. Do we have any questions before we move on? Are you going through anything on the sizing of the purple squares? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we're going to talk about that one here in a minute. Okay, let's look up here at the purple one. So everything I showed you for the larger one, you're going to do exactly the same way for the smaller. You'll decide what size of center you want and then look at your strips or scraps or whatever you're working with and decide on the width of these that you want. Now you'll notice that these are, because you're shrinking down in size, these corners are not very big. So to me, you don't want that strip size to go less than one and a half, which I think is a honey bun, if I remember correctly. I don't work with a lot of pre-cuts because I don't like that pinking sheer edge. Um, and to me, the 10 inch layer cake needs to be 10 and a half and the five inch charm needs to be five and a half. But, uh, so I don't work with a lot of the pre-cuts for those particular reasons, but you certainly can. And 
help me remember, Steve, to come back to that five inch charm pre-cut in a few minutes and the jelly roll and talk about that. So you don't want a strip that's smaller than one and a half here. So if your square gets really small, you've got to get smaller um, with the, your strips here so that you can have some in the corner because you can see that's a pretty tiny um, little rectangle there. Let's see what our width is. I mean triangle. Yeah, that's three-fourths of an inch sewn for the width of that. So you really don't want to go any smaller than that. You're going to have a lot of seams in the corner, which are going to be difficult for sewing and pressing. And then also you're going to do the work for putting that strip on there, but you're not really going to see it too much in that corner. So I would say don't go smaller than um, one and a half, really, for those, those strips. So... And I love on this one, when you look at it, because it's only the two colors, that I see like this big um, square here. It's like this is like a big black square. And then you can see the purple points, which are like the points of a star. So you've got a couple of different design elements on here. And so you've got the big block and then with the purple points. And then you also look at the spool when they come together, you see the spool here and it looks like just a plain solid square here next to it and that they're all sewn on the diagonal. So I really like it when you can work with a simple, simple block like this and so easy to do, but then have so many different design elements that pop up with the way that you do your colors or even the, the width of these that you do on the corners on the outside edge. So I've got a couple of different ones down here we'll just kind of go through. So here you can see some black ones. Now if you think about that you're not going to switch out colors because remember we had either light in the middle and then alternated out or dark in the middle or with the purple one we had purple in the middle or black in the middle. Now if you make them all the same and you put them together look what you get which is kind of cool, but when you start putting blocks right next to each other, you have to look at the, the design elements of what you get. So this one is really pretty and it's really cool, but would it be easier to just have a square here and sew around it? You know, to me, if you're going to have these seams here in the middle, then these need to be different colors to make this important. To me, if these were all going to be black, I wouldn't do it like this. But if I'm going to do different colors in here, then I would do it like this. So you have to think about your colors and your placement because that could change the way that you want to sew a block together, not only in this design, but in other designs. How the blocks come together and what happens could change how you do the whole construction of the project. And I do like this. I think this is really pretty, but maybe go in and do these different colors. Otherwise, the seams going through here, you did the work and there's no value to them. It's like eating empty calories. It, there's no value to it. So here you can see the black diamond dot and the green cobblestone from the new Paradise fabric. I think those are really pretty together and um, great design element. Now on this one, we've got the purple flower dot and the orange diamond dot. So here you can see what I'm talking about, about these corners coming together. Now I like this, but once again, this is doing more, it's got all of the darks in the middle, but you do have the four different ones here coming together and I like that. And look how the spool pops out when you do that and how your colors are different. So this is really pretty, pretty one like this. Keep, uh, do two different colors, but you can change them up. And I think that's really pretty. Let's look at what it looks like with just all of the orange. So see, once again, there it is, all of the orange. And you don't necessarily get the spool when these are all the same and these are all the same. The spool is just lost, it's not in there at all. Let's look at some skinny strips. So I'll leave this one 
up here so because these are kind of normal strip widths for the design and here we are with look at this one this one has skinnier one here and a larger one here And here you can see the opposite. Now I've got two corners that aren't trimmed up. So here you can see, well, this one's got the wide in the middle. It doesn't have the skinny. So I guess my skinny ones are just those two right there. You can see. And that's a cool look. It's going to make your spool, if you're doing a spool in the middle, it's going to make your spool kind of short and fat, which is fine. I have some quilting spools with quilting thread on them where they're like that kind of a different, really pretty. So I think a lot you can do with um, these two design, with this spinning spool design. So do we have a question before we move on to the next part? Uh, oh, so the color's the same, option one and then a square cut? I don't know. Well, when you trim it the first time, it is like an option one. So let's look at that. Um, Oh, that's not a first time. Um, don't know that I have a first time. Oh, here it is. Sorry, got too much on my table. Okay, so here's our square in the center, our strips on the side, very much like what we do with square in a square for those of you that are used to square in a square. But of course, our strip is skinnier for the ratio of the size of our square. But when we come in here and trim it up, yes, it is just like an option one. We put the 90 right in the tip that leaves the fourth of an inch, trim it up and do that to all four corners. That's an option one. Then you come back in here and sew a strip on for the blunted corner area. So this would be like the blunted corner area. This is where you sew the strip. You do not sew it here where the seam or the one fourth inch point is. Don't do it. Okay? So hopefully that helped on that question. Another question? So when you were earlier, you were putting that on a strip. You didn't have a strip, but you were putting it on there. Would it, would it be the blunted side? No, it has to be. Yeah, yes, the blunted you, side. You laid the blunted yeah, corner because, on the strip? Yeah, so see, that's, this is where you have to sew the strip is on this side, not where the point is. Okay? Right. To make it go out. Now if you do sew it here, go ahead and if you wind up with a bunch being like that and you don't rip them off, it is another pattern, it's another look and it's really cool. Um, I did do a pattern like that back, I don't know, maybe 2018, 2019 to where it was almost exactly like this but when the second strip was sewn on, it was sewn on where the point is at and we kept building out this direction instead of the long side direction. You get a totally different look. You may want to play with that and see what you get or go back and look and see if you can find that video. I'm trying to think of what it was called. We did it scrappy so it might have had a scrappy name to it but one of the things that we are working on that I'm going to love, can I talk about that or is that supposed to be a surprise? You can talk Okay, one of the things that we're working on, because um, this August, I think, may, uh, marks our eighth year of doing all of these webinars and these classes, and so they're all up there for you to see, but it's like, how do I go back and find what I'm looking for, you know? So if you're in Premium Club or Quilt Club Week, then we have the different modules that you go and look. But once again, there's getting to be so much content and you're like, well, I really liked that when I watched it in 2018, but I didn't make the quilt. And now I'm kind of thinking, wow, that'd be cool. I want to go back and see that one that I mentioned. How do I find it? We are working on a community page that will kind of be like a Netflix type thing. So think about like a Netflix. I'm sure everybody watching has had a Netflix account at some point in time. So you go in there and you put, um, I want to watch CBS shows, or I want to watch drama movies, or I want to watch 
adventure movies or I want to go in and look for kid movies. My grandkids are here and I need to find some kid movies. So you go in and find that category and then you can just scroll through and see all of those. So wouldn't it be cool if we had like a scrappy category and you go in there and you find the scrappy area and then you go through and you can just see all of the different videos. So we're really excited about it. We've been working on it for about a year. It's a lot of work and a lot of time to do, but um, I really think it'll make all of these videos and all of this teaching and all this online stuff uh, accessible for you guys at your fingertips. And we can say, well, just go to the scrappy area of the community page and you can go in there and, and find the pineapple spool or the spinning spool or, or whatever, the letters to a soldier class or whatever it is that we're, ref the border class, whatever it is that we're referring you to and it'll help you be able to do that. Now, when we do do the option overview book, I want to, and really with any of our webinars, especially back during 2020, I always told everybody at the beginning of every one, we did so many during the pandemic, sometimes multiple ones a day, um, and sometimes one a day for a week, you know, those first two weeks, they were like, you know, you just need to shut down for a while, and so we were like, okay, let's do a video every day and help help us keep our mind off of the world and the chaos and then help you guys keep your mind off of the world and the chaos, which I kind of still need that. But anyway, um, there's so many, many, many videos in there. And so this will help you be able to find that uh, much easier. You can also, like if you're on the Facebook page or the YouTube page or whatever, you can go up to the, like the little bar section and scroll through and see the different videos and stuff. Or to me, the best thing to do is just sign up on our email list and get into where all the webinars are stored and get in there and be able to start watching them, whether you're watching the free ones or whether you're watching Quilt Club Week or the, the Premium Club. Okay, so I have one more exciting little thing I want to show you. And, and you were talking about that uh, option one. Uh, let's just look. And then, let's see, the cup. So would the colors be the same, option one, and then a square cut? And you talked about that, but she's wanting to know about what if the blocks are all the same? That's when you did that, uh, like an op that shows that it's cutting like an option one. Does it matter if they're all well, the Well, the cutting same? for this class, I know I've talked about a lot of different stuff, and I hope I haven't been too scattered today for you guys. Um, but for this class, all the blocks are the same, no matter what sizes you're working on, your colors can vary and the strip width can vary, but you're going to stay consistent with that for all of the blocks. Well, and you showed if they were the same color, then that spool in the middle wouldn't, if you use strips exactly the same, that spool wouldn't show up. Yeah, like the reason why this shows up here is because we have the black in the center and then purple and black. And then we did the opposite here. We did the purple with the black and the purple. So, you you know, you were putting block right next to block. There's no setting square, but you've got to do something with your colors or they're all going to come together dark. What size is the purple? Um, I think this is a six inch center. I don't know. Your pattern has a couple of different sizes. Um, I thought in the beginning I had done it with a five, but I didn't. I, d I think I did it with six inch. Yeah, but you, the cool thing is that you can do any size of center and you can do any size of strip. So if you already have, if you're doing it scrap and you already have a lot of stuff cut and you're wanting to figure out how to use up your two inch strips or maybe you're working with pre-cuts, you've got five inch charms and you've got some um, one and a half inch honey buns, then, you know, just go with those uh, and cut what's easy to cut. You know, two and an eighth isn't easy to cut. Three and three eighths, you know, these eighth of an inch things aren't as easy to cut. Sometimes the fourth of an inches are not as easy to cut. So go in and cut strips that are easy. But remember, don't get too skinny or you're going to lose it um, when they all come together. And you're going to have to mess. Even with this one, as tiny as it was, it was kind of funky and finicky um, when um, I was trying to sew them together because you've got a lot of seams out here on the outside edge on it. Then also a tip, um, when you're doing like your, like when you're doing this one, I'm gonna call it the dark, and you're pressing this last one out, 
when you come back to this one, you want to press the last one in because you don't want both of those seams headed in the same direction. So work on all of your black ones, press them one way, then work on all of your purple ones and press them the opposite way. And I'm just talking about this last strip. So let's look at um, this down here for a minute. I had that one all ready to go, but I'll put it back. Okay, so we're going to flip it over to the back. Okay, so see how I'm talking about this one right here? See how they're both going the same direction? And so that's going to put more bulk and also make it um, a little bit harder to work with, especially if you're down here at the end and you're working with your small ones. So like this one is my dark category. So see how it's going out. This one has my light center. So I would want to press that the opposite way coming back in like that. And then when you sew them together, they're going to be a little bit easier to work with, okay? All right, another question or are we good? I think we're good. Okay, so I want that very beginning one here. Let me get my pieces out here. Where's my beginning? Here it is. Okay, so this next one is um, starts out the same, but we're going to do something different with it. We're going to do some other strip piecing. So on this one, all the things I've said about colors and sizes and stuff would stay the same. But instead of trimming it, leaving the fourth of an inch, we're going to trim it sharp. So that would be like um, a two-step on a flying goose or a two-step on uh, the half-square triangle. So actually, it would be like an option four half-square triangles because we're going to two-step all four corners. So that means that I want the edge of my ruler to be right in that nice, sharp point. And it looks like we're cutting off the fourth of an inch, which we are. But see that sharp? That's what we want to do. So we want to trim all four corners with the two-step. Is there some variation? This is a variation. You know how I love to say, what if we did this, what would happen? And this one I think is really cool. This one probably floats my boat more than the original. Okay, so you're gonna two-step it, and then you're gonna come out here and put your other one on. So, let me just see if I can, if you don't mind me taking a moment, we're just going to come back in here and do this. Okay, so now on this one with the second one on, I need to um, trim it up. So I'm just going to go right to the point. Oh, yeah, since you didn't do it already. Yeah, since I didn't do it already, I'm just going to take this one and show you. Okay. All right, so I'm squaring those corners up, and I'm taking that fourth of an inch off of the point. Okay, so two-step those corners. So two-step the corners, build on out, square it up. So anytime we two-step those corners, you know we're going to come in here and cut it in half.
and because this is big I'm just going to come in here and do one at a time but if your area is large enough to cut through all of it then go right ahead okay so look at that one look at that one and look at that okay so there's what it looked like we cut both directions and we get this now because this one was um, light in the middle to me it doesn't have as much pizzazz as the dark one I'm going to show you but look if you just went back and sewed these together I'm going to move this out what if you went up down up down so there's kind of a look but I've got a dark one here I want to show you that I just think is really pretty it's like a new option it is like a new option let me move this one up okay so this one had the dark in the middle and to me the dark has the most pizzazz trimmed up to the tip squared off our corners cut in half both directions and there's your piece so look what happens that is a spool look at that really cool spool I love that I think that is super pretty and in the pattern I do give you a little bit of hint on how to figure sizing on that but since all of them are the same you can just start out with whatever you got and just end up with whatever size you get you don't have to have it now if you wanted to do this for a border I think this is really pretty for a border and once again I'm just looking at the black and it's going down and up down and up and there's there you are a border which I think is really pretty just like that okay so that's it on the class I want to show you some things for premium club for those that are in club and for those of you that kind of want to know what's going on maybe you want to join and then we're going to talk and we're going to talk about the option overview book so any questions before we move on um, do you have an approximate size of the purple one um no I don't let's see depends on borders and all of that let's see this is a It's an eight inch sewn block. So I've got one, two, three, four. So multiply the four times eight is what, 32? And then just add your border. So this one is um, two and a half. So that would be two and a half and two and a half is five. Makes it 37. And then we'll just go ahead and measure both of these eight. So eight and eight is 16. So 16 and 37 is what, 53? Yeah. And then, of course, however many you go uh, vertical. And the cool thing is if you want it wider, just make your more on your row. If you want it longer, just add, keep adding rows. So it's really easy to do. Truthfully, um, most of the time when you have scraps, you're not going to have scraps this big. I, um, I do think the scrappy one would be really pretty in a smaller because you're going to get more flavor, more fabric in there. And I think that's important in a scrap quilt. To be able to get more fabrics more flavors in there i this is really cool though when i look at this quilt i think about an old quilt because they had to have something that was speedy they had to have something of size to actually work and cover a, a person up they were making something that had to get done because winter was coming and they needed another quilt and so um, and when, the, when they went west in the wagons there was actually a book that told them everything that they needed to have in their wagon to go and most of the time they had in there 13 quilts that you needed 13 quilts to go in your wagon if you were headed west and the quilts were used not only to cover up and stay warm but to keep the wind out the dirt out uh, a privacy wall you know just a tent a covering for shade I mean the quilts were a necessity and they had to have them really fast and when I see this one I see one of those wagon train quilts 
you've got to cover a lot of territory, get some good size, and you've got to do it fast. So that's what I think about with that one. Okay, so let's talk about um, the option overview class because it's going to start next week. Now next week is Labor Day if I'm on the correct week in my head. So we will not have Monday class, we'll do Tuesday class. It'll be at 11 o'clock central just like this. It will only be on Tuesday next week because of Labor Day. So the other classes working up to Quilt Club Week will be back on Monday at 11 o'clock. Did you have a question, Steve? No, okay. All right, so Monday, um, I'm sorry, Tuesday, I think that's the 6th, 5th or 6th, Tuesday, 5th, we'll start the option overview class. Now, in your downloads, there was a place that said downloads. You could click on it, open it up. I looked at my email Steve sent me last night. Everything was in there. So if you got an email, I know you've got it. We've sent it for the last two weeks on all of the emails. But if you don't have it or you're new or you want it, go to our email, squareandasquare.com, and tell us that you need it. Question? If they're watching from the web, the free webinar section uh, in the teaching cloud, for people that have free webinars, there's a download link there to... Okay, if you're watching in the free webinar section, there's a, a download and a link right there for all of it, too. There, It talks about the new quilts, the fabric that we used, um, um, the new patterns, you know, just everything that we're doing from now to um, the end of September with Quilt Club Week and Premium Club and all that. So go there. If you need help or have questions, of course, always you can email us at squareandasquare.com. Um, go to the website and you can do it or Jody at squareandasquare.com, Steve at squareandasquare.com. Um, you can also, we have a quilt text hotline. It's 817-713-2879. And that's if you need quilting help. You know, if you have a question about an order or a question about a download or whatever, it's really best if you go to the email section and do that. If it comes up on the quilt text, then I have to say, Steve, did you get the information on this one? And then I screenshot a picture of it and I send it to him. So it's more steps for us and it delays us getting the information for you. And most of the time that uh, type of information we need uh, records of. And so with the emails, we can have a, a trail to follow up with. Of. And also when it comes through on the text line, we don't know who it is. So when you're asking us about an order or whatever, we don't, we don't know who it is. We don't know what to go look up. So um, that kind of stuff, email. If you, need, if you want to show me a picture of a quilt or fabrics, will these work or something about that, then that's the quilt text line. And the, and the main reason why we have that is so that I can go right to the thread where the student and I are talking. I can make a video and just put it on there really quick and so it's a great way for your teacher to be right there to help you to see what you're doing and then for me to show you what you need to know to help you with whatever it is that you're doing, okay? All right, so the option overview, uh, if you wanna put the camera down here on the, the book. So this is what we're going to be making starting next week. We have three classes and we have the options divided up into three different categories. So the very first day we're going to work on um, making um, our basic squares and I think on your supply list there's 33 inch squares 30 squares that are three inches and then the width of your strips are one and three fourths and we're going to show you how to sew the basic square give you all the tips and hints we're going to show you how to trim the options we're going to look at quilts that use those options we're going to look at the charts in the reference book of how to read them so if you do not have if you do not have your main ruler, this is the ruler in here, and this is the quick and easy book, and then the reference book. These are the main two tools and the main things that we just go back and use over and over and over again, and this is the reference book, and it's gonna have the options in it and the charts. Now, if you're Premium Club, we've got some pages that you can download. There's even a page that has like the family um, structure of the options in there and that will be helpful too. And then, of course, you know, we've got our charts, and we're gonna show you how to use the charts. Because my goal with this option overview is to get you um, knowledgeable and educated and all the tips and hints so that you can become the piecer that you've always dreamed about being in learning the options. And, 
you will also, um, in the order of the method that we're teaching them, it'll be easier for you to remember the trimmings and why we trim that way and all the different tips and hints that go with those options. So we're going to be working on the basic square, option one, option eight, Here's my eight. Here's my option eight. So notice how this one, they all start out with the square in the middle, strips on the side. All of them do until you get into either the diamonds or the funky stuff. But most everything starts out with the square in the middle. And I want you to notice how these options that we're all going to teach continue to end up with a square. So option eight, option 11, there's the pineapple. Oh, option 11, I've taken my pieces out for something and didn't get them put back in, but um, this is the option 11 right here, and you can see how that's a square right there. Of course, we start out with the bigger square, but you're gonna end up with four of these that have the little square. And so even when you're learning the charts and the math, all of it stays the same when, it's, when it finishes out with a square. And then also option uh, 13, see how it finishes out with a square. So the math and the understanding the charts and everything, all of those work the same. And so that's why they're all in the same family. They all have that same family DNA. And then the next week, we're going to go in and we're going to learn about option three, which is the flying goose. And that also is option nine. Do I have a nine in here? Option nine, and then option 15. So those are the three options that all share that same. So here's the option 15, this right here. See how it's a flying goose inside a big flying goose. So we're gonna learn all of those. The math all stays consistent. The cutting all stays consistent. So it helps you learn them because you're embedding that down in your brain instead of skipping around you know, and learning one, and then, oh my gosh, the trimming changes for option three, and then the trimming changes for option four, and so on. This helps you learn it, see the family uh, DNA characteristics, resemblance, and I think it just helps you learn them and understand them and remember them better. And then for our last class, we will go in and learn um, option four, the half square triangle, which is be option four, option 10, Option 10, so see how option four is a half square triangle. Option 10 has a half square triangle in it when you're working on it. And then option 14 has the half square triangle in it. So the math stays consistent because whatever you start out with in the middle, that's the math that you use for all of it. Look at this beautiful one in Christmas fabric. See that big half square triangle right there right there, right there. So this is an option 14 right here. So we're gonna learn those in, um, in order of the DNA and the characteristics of the options. And then option two, we're going to learn it just in one of our classes, that w one of our pre-classes that we do for Quilt Club Week, we're going to work on the option two, okay? All right, so you should have a download with your squares and your strips of what you need. Uh, premium club you can go in and download your stuff for your book make sure you get a book wide enough uh, at least two to three inches so that you can keep adding pages because as I keep making stuff I just keep adding them to my book and with a a, a, a ring notebook you can go in and put them wherever you want in there and I think as you're working with square and a square and and doing everything I think that it's fun to just keep adding pieces to your book as you keep increasing and learning, okay? So you can use scraps for this if you want, but please use quality fabric. You're learning it, you know, if you do not use good quality fabric, then it affects the perfection of your work. It's just the way it is. I know on all these different Facebook quilting threads, you have all the people who are like, well, I can't afford the good fabric or I don't have availability of the good fabric or whatever. 
you really need to use the best that you can. And that's one reason why when our new fabric comes in, so we have our brand new line of Paradise fabric that just came in. It's been, we started it, started with it being on sale last week and it will stay on sale to the end of September. So you have six weeks to go in and pick up the good quality fabric and to get it at $10 a yard instead of the $14 a yard. And most of the time when new fabric comes in, I don't know of anybody else that marks down their new fabric. But we do that because we want you to work with the good fabric. We want you to get it in your hands and start building the beautiful quilts. When you have availability of all of the fabrics, not just, you know, two or three different ones that, that people have left over and then they put it uh, on sale or on the markdown. Um, I really want you to be able to have that fabric and work with it and make the beautiful quilts. So this, these next blocks that I'm going to show you are, is the very first block for Premium Club. So Premium Club is a year-long subscription. You, you pay and, it, and it's for the year. Quilt Club Week is a part of it. So excellent value. And you get a fall semester of classes. We're going to start on the 11th of September will be our first fall class. And then we go up into holiday times, anywhere from nine to 12 classes in the fall, depending on how many classes we need to make the project to learn what it is that I'm wanting you to learn that semester. And then in January we start, depending on how the days roll for the first of the year and all that and how many classes we need. And we go um, really heavy uh, through March and then um, we finish up in April. We're always done by Mother's Day. We don't go with our Monday classes after Labor Day. Then in the summer, it's a time for you to get caught up. We do free webinars through the summer. We're working on Quilt Club Week and fall classes. But of course, we're always here to help you all the time. And um, I really like, it's been a lot of work. I can't begin to tell you how much work we have done all summer long um, to prepare for Quilt Club Week, the new fabric, the classes, the quilts, the, the fall premium club to get everything ready to go for you. It's been a lot of fun, but we have worked our tails off for sure. So um, the fall class for Premium Club, um, I haven't really gotten a name for the quilt yet. I kind of like to wait for the quilt to speak to me as I'm working on it. We're going to be using a lot of four patches and we're using four patches in Quilt Club Week, so make sure you get your four patch ruler ordered. Um, we go into depth on what it does and why you need it and how it works over anything else. And then um, in our fall class for a premium club, we're also going to be using nine patches. So if you don't have the nine patch ruler, I recommend that you have that. Now with premium club, um, each week your paperwork, your patterns is a part of it and you just download that and you have your pattern and that's a part of it. There's no extra charge for, for that that we're teaching that week. That's just a part of Premium Club. So your patterns come um, along with that. On occasion, there's something, a pattern that you have to buy, but generally for that semester, each week you just download the paper that you need for whatever it is that we're doing. Um, I'm wanting to show you the, the middle part of the quilt. So um, the middle, I like for, the premium club classes to be a surprise is like, oh, this week, what is she going to show us, you know, on colors and patterns and all that. So I don't throw that all at you at the beginning. You're kind of used to like taking a class, you buy the pattern, you buy the fabric, you see what you're doing, you choose your colors, all that kind of stuff. You have all that information ahead of time. That's not necessarily so with the fall and the spring classes for premium club. So uh, this particular one, we're starting out with a 20 inch block in the middle. And I am making a lot of different color samples of that 20 inch block so that I can show you a lot of different opportunities for color so that you can pick what you, what you like because people have different um, palettes of taste of what they like. So um, I will keep showing you um, up until fall classes different ones. I'm probably going to have about three more than what I'm showing you today. And that's really all I'm going to show you until it comes time for class that day. And so hopefully um, by next week, I'll have the fabric amounts ready to go so that you know you need five yards of background and you need three yards of uh, focus print and so on so that you can have your fabrics. 
Um, with the um, Paradise fabric being on sale, we've got a couple of different things that I've been recommending for people is to choose your background that you like from uh, the different diamond dots. So um, I've shown quite a few different uh, groupings like this over the last two weeks so that you can see how the different fabrics look together. Can we have the camera um, down here, please? Oh, sure. Pay attention, huh? Well, you're, he's over there working with the comments, and so he didn't see that I switched. But see, here you can see the diamond dots. There's eight different ones. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's yellow, and then there's also the black diamond dot. So pick a background that you like. The next block I'm going to make has a lot of the blacks and yellows in it that I'll be able to show you next week. That one that I've got in my head is just really an exquisite popping quilt like crazy. So i um, trying to show you some different options, like that word options, choices for your backgrounds and then go in and pick some of your focus prints and I'll have some more details on those for you um, next week is my plan. And then I also showed you one in the vintage. So this right here, if you want to take a screenshot of it, this is a great grouping for you to get or to think about. And then let me reach over here and grab this. Um, this one right here, if you want more of the, the vintage look, any of these here would be great for the quilt. We've got the gray and the black of the diamond dot of the paradise. And then the two bow ties, the red vine, the red fuzzy leaf, and then three of the checks. This would be great to work for your quilt. I don't have this one made up yet, but I'm definitely going to make one of those because, of course, that red and black and the check is right up my alley. Okay, so let's look at some of the samples of the 20-inch block. So this one here... Um, we've used the gray as the background, we've used the purple flower as a focus, we've used the green diamond dot as our accent, and then we've added in the little green cobblestone one. Now this one is a little bit different because on these corners here, we did not do background. We did the color from the two fabrics. So actually we have um, all three of the the accent, we have it, we have the cobblestone, and we have the purple flower dot here. And I really like this one because it adds like a crown effect when you have four corners on your block uh, that you focus on, your eye goes to and focuses instead of just this green one standing out in the gray. And I really like that. And during Quilt Club Week, one of the lectures that Sherry and I did was we took blocks like this that we call crown blocks where they have points that come out on four sides of the block. And we talked about that, and that's one of the lectures, and we showed quite a few quilts with that. So I really like this one with that crown effect, and it really takes on a different look and shape than the other ones where I have not done this. So I was pleasantly surprised with that one when it turned out that way. Now, since I'm going to have quite a few, I'm going to pick one that is my favorite, and I'm going to go with those colors and keep building with it for the rest of the quilt. Um, but I think since I'm going to have quite a few of these 20-inch blocks, I'm going to recommend that if you make up quite a few 20-inch blocks to choose your fabrics and what you like, which I highly recommend that you do because this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful quilt, and um, I want you to be happy with your fabrics that you choose. And of course, you can go into your stash and use your fabrics. You don't have to pick from what we have. Go in and choose what you want. Um, but I think these I'll either turn into like table runners or maybe um, put some solid blocks with them or something. But because I'll have quite a few of these 20 inch blocks, I will sew them up into something. I really do like this combination. I think it takes on a little bit of a snowflake look. So if you went with other colors that were more snowflakey and just make sure that you keep the contrast in the same areas like I talked about here then you'll get that snowflake look too. I saw a quilt the other day that had the gray and the black and the yellow oh my gosh it was exquisite I certainly want to make one of those so think about the black the yellows and the gray it was just 
um, exquisite. So I'm going to work on one that has that color combo in it, in it also. Oh, and where's our, we've got one more yellow. Um, So I'm going to work on one that has those in it, the black, the grays, and the yellows. It was just really, really pretty. So I guess I have at least two more I'm working on. Okay, so here's this one. Purple flower dot, green cobblestone, green diamond dot, and the gray diamond dot. Now you could also do it just like this and substitute your, your gray background for the black or even the pink. I mean, when you look at this one here, this color combo here, you could do this in here. Keep the purples the same, add the pinks in here. Really, really pretty. And I'm really liking the crown kind of effect here on the end. I think for my, my one that I choose that's going to be my focus one, for the middle of mine, I'm going to do something like this here on the corner. Now also I want you to notice how the four patches kind of keep going out like this. You can also put a four patch in the corner and I have one to show you on that too. And here is the first one I did and it was in with the orange and the black. And notice how it, without that crown corner on here, it just takes a total different look. And that's one of the things that we do with Premium Club is we talk about a block and the colors and then talk about how when you do some things differently, how it just takes on a whole different look. This one even looks larger than this one. You know, you still have the, the black coming out like this, like you do here with the green, but it really just kind of focuses inside here because you don't have that going on out here we just have the background, so you just really see the little check going through the little four patch. Now this next one, I um, did not do the crown corner on, but I did add the four patch in the corner. And I really like that. So here's the top part of it, and you can see that four patch moving on out in the corner that we didn't do on the first two. And on all of these, we kept the inside um, of the option one, we, keep, we kept these colors the same. See how these two colors, we kept the same. And here we made the points different. So it just makes that star really jump out. And we did the four patch going clear on out. So I, I like to show a couple of different ways so that people can kind of make the quilts their own. Let's go back to this one just again for a minute, please. Okay, so I want you to, to notice this yellow cobblestone here, how we used it here and we used it here, but we didn't use it here, we used the little yellow flower dot. I, I, really, am, I really love this one. I think this is a really pretty, I mean, I love all of them. It just depends on, on what you like and how you, how you want to do it to make it your own. So I have this corner here I need to finish out here and here. And where do you have these at? Where is this block? This is Premium Club. This is our Fall Premium Club. This is our first block. Um, I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have nine, at least nine classes, maybe twelve. I, um, I always lay them out and structure them of, of uh, the different classes. So sometimes they kind of morph a little bit as I as I get going. But I really love this color combo. I do really, I like the orange. You know, if we um, switched up something here in the, in the crown area and then did the four patch in the middle, it would take on a totally different look. And I may make those little pieces and just kind of lay them on here for class so that you can kind of see the difference in them. And then of course the gray. I'm going to do one up in the blacks and yellows, and I'm going to do one up in the vintage with the blacks and the reds, and then um, I'll choose my favorite and go from there. I'm not sure. And I, as, I, as I work on the premium quilt as the weeks go by, I choose one color, and then I just keep going out um, with it. Depending on my time, I may add a second color. I don't, I'm not sure. 
on that. Okay, so any last minute questions here and we'll wrap up our video. So um, if you want to join uh, Quilt Club Week or Premium Club, you can go to the website, squareinasquare.com. There's a banner up at the top. And is it still scrolling like it was? It yeah, it rotates around every couple of seconds. And so you can click on what it is that you're looking for and what you want. Also, if you're searching for something, just go to the search bar and put it in there. It'll give you the details and you can sign up. If you need help or have questions, just email us. Use a search. And Steve. Try to use one word if you can. So when you're doing the search, it works better when you do one word. Well, because you're going to, yeah. Yeah. And if you're used to using websites, you know that. But yeah. it's not any different than anybody else's. Right. All right. So no last minute questions. We are on a roll here with classes. Um, something every week. And then uh, Quilt Club Week and Premium Club. Replays available? Yes. Replays are always available. If you don't catch us live, you can always go back in and watch it again. Wherever you're watching now, it'll repeat here in a second. It may take a couple minutes for... YouTube or Facebook to get Yes, ready. when we do it live, it takes a couple of minutes for it to get, I'm going to say, buffered and get put up for the replays. And then it'll be ready for a replay. It's also in the free webinar section. Okay, in the free and webinar the, section the also website. on our teaching website. Okay. So did they did they say which colors they prefer? Which one was oh, their favorite? Ask. No, I didn't ask, but I, I guess... The orange one. Uh-huh, I would like... Beautiful. That's all... That's it. Okay. I don't know. This this um, turquoise and purple and yellow one is one that I just worked on yesterday and this morning, and I'm really I'm really digging it. I may uh, I may move on with that one as my my ex my second color wave or whatever. I don't know. That black and yellow and gray is going to be pretty awesome. Blues. So. Somebody came like the blues. Uh huh. Blue color. Blue and yellow. So see if you like your. If yeah. you like the blue, you can go in and substitute the purple and the yellow for anything. You could go in and substitute the greens. You could go in and substitute um, any of them. Because, see, like if orange you... Orange and black. Yeah. Favorites. Yeah, the orange and black. So think about... Let me see where these are at, little pieces. So if you... See how the orange one will go with the purple and the blue? And then you could add the green in here instead of the yellow. Pink and orange, orange and black, turquoise and purple. Yeah. So we got lots of. Lots of. See, everybody has a different opinion about what their favorite is. Awesome. Yeah. Uh oh, I like them all. I have a problem. <laughs> I'm kind of having a problem too. And see, I like. I'm liking this one, the new one that I'm working on. But I really like this crown part here of the gray, and I love the the way the green just pops out green with and that. Purple. Yeah. Purple. Yeah. So a lot of different combos that you can use. Now on the, the sale, for those of you that are new that haven't done anything with the sale yet, um, there's a couple of different, um, uh, if you order $150, you're gonna get free shipping, 150 and up. If you order $300, you're gonna get, we have two little boxes that are um, just little freebies that we add on for that for 300. And then we have, um, if you order three yards or more, you're going to get it at $10 a yard. So you may decide that you want like 10 yards of this one and three yards of this one and so on. You can go in and, and do that. But we also have little buttons on the website where if you want to buy a one yard bundle, then you can get a one yard piece of all of them. Put and the word bundle in. Yeah, put the, bun put the word bundle in the search bar. Now, it's not $10 a yard if you're buying the one yards, but you still get a discount. We've never done that before, so we're excited about that. Then also on the two yards, you can order a two yard bundle, still get a discount. I'm not sure what it is, but you still get a discount. And then a lot of people go in and order three yards, and then they go in and order like five and six and 10 or even 20 yards of some of the basics, like the black and the gray. The aqua, those are flying out of here. So if you're interested in those, don't delay. I would suspect if you wait another week, you're not going to be able to get black, gray, or aqua. It's going to be, um, it's, it's getting down. And then, um, so you can just hit bundle on one yard, two yards, or three yards. Uh, it'll if, all come up under bundle. And it'll all pop up so that you can see. And then also don't forget about the threads. We have the... Um, we have three different thread combos 
for you that are the colors of all of the new Paradise fabric. It's um, Eurofill. We have the 12 large spools. So see if you want to do, uh, of course you can use it for piecing, you can use it for quilting, you can use it, um, it's a 50 weight, 100% cotton. Then we have this one that just has the three uh, neons in it. I have a couple of requests for the red and black vintage for that block. Yes, I'm definitely making the red and black vintage on that one. And hopefully you'll be able to see it next week. I'll show it. Okay. And then this one has uh, 20, this one has, I think, 20 spools. Yeah, 20 spools of thread, 220 yards on each one, 50 weight, 100% cotton. So. I also have an um, applique quilt that I'm working on with the new fabrics that I'll show you guys later this fall. And so I'm liking all of these little spools with the colors for my applique. Okay? All right. Any last minute questions in there? Um, no? Nope. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it today. I always, um, I love to teach. I'm a, I'm a teacher at heart. I love to teach. Um, sometimes I have a hard time taking my teaching hat off and for the rest of my life. I, funny story I was should I tell the Costco story <laughs> oh anyway all of a sudden I decided I was teaching at the checkout line at Costco so I am I embarrassed myself but <laughs> too much bossing uh, a good friend told me one time she said oh you're not bossy you just have a lot of great ideas so I guess that's it <laughs> so anyway we will see you um, next week on Tuesday correct um, and we'll start our option overview book. I'm really excited to show you guys that. I've done all of, I think I have, done all of mine in the new, all of my options that I'm going to be teaching with and showing you. I've used the new Paradise fabric with. I did that probably three weeks ago and we've just been so busy I can't even remember. I got way too much files. Too many windows are open in here. But um, uh, I use the Paradise fabric for the option overview and it's fun to see the colors come together and all that. So you'll get to see. And remember the sale goes to the end of September, so you got plenty of opportunity to see how all these fabrics work together while supply lasts. I do have to throw that in there because just because the sale goes to the end of September doesn't mean we will have it. I really, certain yeah, sure. certain colors for sure are going to be gone here very, very soon. Okay. All right. See y'all later. Bye.